communism moved into the Soviet Union in the year 1917. It was almost, I suppose anyone would have to say, exactly 70 years. And the walls began to come down in Berlin. Poland fell to the free world. Czechoslovakia fell to the free world or is in the process. Romania, nation after nation, and to this day it's like dominoes. For 70 years that must be declared upon any people must work a reverse for another people. But there is also a 70 years that not too many people are familiar with. And I'm going to string you along here for a while, and then I'm going to share that with you. Your blessing will be in the very last verse I read today from the Word of God. It's a verse that is for this moment, it is for this hour, it is for this time, and it is for you. Very few people could truly understand. Our Father, it's the beginning, as I told you, with the desert storm would intervene more, take a more active role that was visible than ever before, even before Desert Storm came to pass. Isn't that right? I said, this is going to be the shortest war and one of the quickest you've ever seen. Why? Because of the Scripture. And that's why, beloved, you must fine-tune, I mean hone, your mind into our fathers to keep up at, with the pace of events that are transpiring now. You wake up in almost a new world every day. By that I mean things are changed, and yet there's nothing new under the sun. It's the same old record being played over again, sometimes on the flip side. But over and over, your father has set forth the ensample, and he will never change from that. And that's why it's so easy to understand prophecy. I want you to open your Bibles, if you would, into the Minor Prophets, the Zechariah next to the last book in the Old Testament. And let's go to chapter 1. I want you to concentrate on 70 years and what a difference 70 years can make when they end. Boy, the Cold War was long. It was drawn out. It was... Same old thing, same old scrambled eggs every morning. But when those 70 years ended, I mean, things started hopping, popping. And, you know, a person that had really observed and studied communism in that part of the world would never have believed the year before at the, the magnitude that that part of the world had changed. So... When it's prophetic, you'd better say, hey, my father's talking to me. So let's pick up, if we may, here in Zechariah. Oh, let's go with verse 4 of chapter 1. Be, be ye not as your fathers. And this is something you must not do. Don't be as your fathers. What does that really mean? In other words, don't, don't mess up the way they did. I recorded and it's written here, whatever you do, don't do the same errors that they did. Snap out of it. It's so... I don't think if, if a stove will burn one, it'll burn 20, all right? There's no need in everyone having to learn that lesson over and over and over. Soon you can start listening to your father and know it's going to be the way he says it. Be ye not as your fathers, unto whom the former prophets have cried, those I sent, God says, even saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, turn ye now from your evil ways and from your evil doings. But they did not hear, nor hearken. They wouldn't listen unto me, saith the Lord. Do you know what that means? Well, that meant the evil. They went out on Saturday night and just had a ball. That's not what it's talking about at all. All right? Not at all. He trained, educated, and led the people to know what would happen to them as a nation. He trained, educated the people to let them know what would happen to them as families. And... Rather than staying firm to the Word of God, man has this little habit of trying to defeat Satan on his own. I, I, I marvel 
I, I really marvel at some of the ideas some people get. Because God will cut you down. Even I don't care how good your intentions are. If you go against His plan. So, whatever. When we've come this far, let us not mess up now. Let's get it right. Let's do it His way. We don't want any problems with the Father. We've got enough with the world, all right? Because I'll guarantee you, problems with this world we can handle. That's, hey, that's no step for a stepper. But problems with our Father, you're not going to handle those. He's going to squish your little egg, all right? He's going to, he, he, he's not going to, Becky, well, Becky, what is it that person you said, don't get mad, get even? Is that right? I'm not going to tell you who, I didn't say I was going to identify who said it, all right? We'll both be in trouble with your mother. <laughs> oh, don't get mad, get even, all right? <laughs> but observe, you know, God gets even quick, you know, he, he, He's got our chain, man, and He can flush you anytime He wants to, all right? Verse 5, Your fathers, where are they? Isn't that pretty obvious? They're, they're with Him. But God is the same always. Hey, He knows what He's talking about. And the prophets, do they live forever? Their word does, okay, because it's the Father's word. But my words and my statutes, which I commended my servants, the prophets, did they not take hold of your fathers? And they returned and said, Like as the Lord of hosts thought to do unto us according to our ways. Got that? Our ways. We're going to do it our way. All right? And according to our doings. So hath he dealt with us, you bet. And that's why they got slapped up, you know, and down, trouble. you got to listen to the Word. It's going to happen the way our Father has stated it will come to pass. As we were studying this morning, Jesus says, I thirst so that the Scriptures might be fulfilled. Every one of them. When you start writing your own Scriptures or you start listening to the traditions of men, when you fall into the pitfalls of the Kenite and start using names that you're more intelligent enough to use to know that it brings the wrath and is unwise, when you start doing things against God's plan, you're walking into the buzzsaw. Learn the lesson from your father. What am I saying? Do it his way and you will be successful. I think Shepherd's Chapel is a pretty good witness to that. You as a part of it. You as a family. Why? We don't teach anything but our Father's Word. Hey, I've had journals and I receive enough junk mail and poop sheets that I could read them up and down and they are so comical because it's men's things and ideas that would get the whole family right back in the same cesspool they crawled out of to find peace of mind. The Word is the way and don't ever forget it. If you want to teach... Teach God's Word and leave the junk alone. If you claim you follow me and you teach something other than the Word of God, you're a liar. All right? Upon the four and twentieth day... I'll tell you what, let's skip on to the... This, you know, well, why not? Let's read it. On the four and twentieth day of the eleventh month, which is the month of Sabbat, in the second year of Darius, came the Word of the Lord unto Zechariah, the son of Berechiah, the son of Idu, the prophet, saying, I saw by night. Now listen to me. And behold, a man riding upon a red horse, and he stood among the myrtle trees. They were in the bottom, and behind him were red horses speckled and white. You recognize the four horses, the four horsemen, even from the book of Revelation. Duplicate. These are divine... Uh, it is a divine intervention. It is God's scouts. They're not pulling a chariot. They're not warriors. They are scouts. Scouting out, as we'll find. Then said I, O oh my Lord, what are these? And the angel that talked with me said unto me, I will show thee what these be. Now, what's the angel going to do? He's going to show us. All right, let's look. If God's going to scout something out, what is it? And what period of time does it apply? And the man that stood among the myrtle trees answered and said, These 
are they whom the Lord hath sent. They didn't originate here. The Lord hath sent. Meaning there was more intervention by Almighty God than there had been for quite some time. He was taking a hand in earthly affairs. Again, I'll illustrate much as desert storm. All right, No one, even the generals themselves, said this is a miracle. And they let it be known with tears swelling in eyes that they knew where the miracle came from, from Almighty God. The Lord has sent to walk to and fro through the earth. And they answered the angel of the Lord, of the Lord that stood among the myrtle trees and said, We have walked to and fro through the earth, and behold, all the earth sitteth still and is at rest. Everybody's crying, Peace, peace, peace. We must have peace in the Soviet uh, nations, the Baltic nations. We can't allow this to explode. Be still. Agree. We must have a peace talk in the Middle East. We must have peace everywhere. Peace be still. Then the angel of the Lord answered and said, O Lord of hosts, how long wilt thou not have mercy on Jerusalem and on the cities of Judah? Uh, Again, bear in mind where the children of Judah are, the majority of them. That's where Judah is today. Against which thou hast had indignation these threescore and ten years. How long is threescore? A score is twenty, right? Three twenties is sixty, and ten is seventy years. For seventy years. And the Lord answered the angel that talked with me with good words. Underline it. Good words and comfortable words. I'm going to tell you something. I want you to be assured. Everything that happens after the seventy years over to you should be good and comfortable. And you might as well start counting your blessings because they haven't even begun as to what it's going to. If, there's a big qualifier on this, if you are aligned in the Word of God, if not, you're going to get burned. So the angel that communed with me said unto me, Cry thou. This means shout it out, saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, I am jealous of Jerusalem and of Zion with a great jealousy. And I am very sore displeased with the heathen that are at at ease. For I was but a little displeased, and they helped forward the the affliction. In other words, I was punishing my children, the Christian people, whoever and wherever you are. I was trying to get their attention and straighten up their act. And while I was doing that, you jumped on the wagon and nearly pushed them into the mire. God doesn't like that. You see, beloved, Satan knows when God corrects certain people. And when Satan jumps on and adds his two cents worth. If the person isn't intelligent enough in God's Word and isn't wise enough to know, then it can be really a rough trip for you. Until finally some morning you'll wake up and say, I perceive there be a demon after me. (laughs) All right? Maybe I should have shaketh him off. A little late, friend, but good. Fine, you know? Okay, Satan will take advantage of you even when God's correcting you, all right? Therefore, thus saith the Lord, I am returned to Jerusalem with mercies. My house shall be built in it, saith the Lord of hosts, and a line shall be stretched forth upon Jerusalem. At the beginning of the first day of the millennium, the millennium temple shall be built, but not until. We're busy building the temple right now. And look around you. You're looking at it. The temple is the many-membered body of Christ, which is the temple of the end times. But there is a beautiful temple coming, but it will not be built until Christ returns to this earth. All there are rumors that there is another temple being built. Again, don't be deceived, all right? You're looking at the temple when you look at your brothers and your sisters wherever they might be around this world, that know his word. Cry yet, saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, My cities through prosperity shall yet be spread abroad. Through what? Prosperity. Good. 
God's p children that really ride with Him are going to have it good from now on. If. Don't you just hate it when I use that qualifier that way? But, beloved, it's the truth. You've got to be attuned with the Father or He cannot use you. If you're out here chasing the woods and you're out here butting your head up against a brick wall till it gets so bloody with your wanting to destroy this system or that system, forget it. He can't handle you. He doesn't want you. All you can do is cause trouble to those that are doing something for Him. Do you understand? Stay with His Word and be blessed. It is all good from here with the exception of when we pull these little old sins and He says, Pow! Straighten up your act. You know, and you say, Yes, Lord, I repent. You know, I had that coming and thank you for giving it to me. Now, we all... I mean, when I say good, I don't mean that your life is going to be so precious and prosperous that it's boring. And that's what it would be, okay? If you didn't have a little challenge now and then, what good would you be? If you didn't know from... If we didn't know, especially, I'll, t I'll say this generation that we came through the Depression. Hey, we, could, we, we should get a patent on how to get by. You know what I mean? What you can do with peanuts and what you can do with cornbread. And if you got an old cow, boy, if you got it made. If you got cornbread and the cow to get a little milk. You, no one in here ever had cornbread and sweet milk? For supper? Oh, listen, I'll tell you. That's, that's gourmet stuff we're talking about here now. But... but <laughs> It's good, you know, on getting by. You know how to get by because you've had problems. It's made a good person out of you. So just because God reaches down and protects you, even though overall everything's going to be good. Hey, look at this network. Can't you see that everything's been good for it? Don't you know there's a reason for it? I couldn't do it, and you couldn't do it. But He can, and He's going to. And hey... Hang on, hang on, get ready to go for the ride, because he's returning soon, and you have a part in it, if, there we go again, you'll do it his way, otherwise, he's got no need for you, go do your own thing if you want to, it's best if you go your way, wherever that is, there's a reason he has us all scattered, all right? Everybody's supposed to do their own thing. I'm not, I'm not saying that some of you shouldn't plant seeds or do your own whatever you're led in a ministry to do. I'm saying do it His way or you're not going to be blessed. It's just that simple. Otherwise, from here, mark this day. From here forward, everything's going to be good if you'll let it. All right, will you buy that? Good. Then lifted up mine eyes, and I saw and beheld the four horns. And, of course, I'm not going to read any further than that. You all know what the four horns are. They're the four external enemies that Satan uses to overcome and to conquer the world. It's the, it's the hidden dynasty of religion, politics, the economy, and education. Watch these school teachers. <laughs> if they're teaching music and they're teaching... <laughs> if you got one like that, you got a winner, I'm telling you. Working for the Lord. Amen. But do, you know, watch those four hidden dynasties. Of course, if we read on, we would find there are four carpenters and so on. That's God's way of leading. But that's not the message today. The message is the 70 years and what happens after it because you're after it. There were supposedly two superpowers in this world up until about four, three years ago. And one isn't a superpower no longer. But there is one that is the leader of the free world, and it has many strong brothers that are in the Lord and are a part of the house of Israel. By that I mean Canada to the north, all Christian nations everywhere, and Christian people in whatever nation, wherever they are to do God's work. Many people will stand up for their people, and they will be prosperous and successful. Understand when I use the word prosperity concerning teaching and sowing seeds, I'm not talking money necessarily. I'm talking sowing seeds, which is God's word, which is truth. 
And if you have a successful ministry, you don't have to beg. God will always supply your needs if you're doing His work. All right? Now, I, I'm not going to turn to Daniel, the ninth chapter. Let me just tell you about it. You can make a note of it if you want to and study it on your own. There, Daniel spoke of these 70 years, spoken of by Jeremiah. But rather than just hearing what Daniel says about Jeremiah, don't you think it'd be better if we went right to Jeremiah and got it from the horse's mouth to see what was said there? Let's all turn to the 20... The 20... Uh, 25th chapter of Jeremiah. Let's go to the horse's mouth and let's understand what these uh, 70 years have to do, what it's talking about, what your father has to say about it, because that's exactly the way it's going to be. Always has been. I don't know why our parents couldn't stay on track. If God said something's going to happen this way, why they would go ahead and listen to other people and get off track, I don't know. But hey, let's don't make the same mistakes. Inventing the wheel one time is enough. It's a circle, and it rolls easier than a square one. All right, that, boy, that you know, it takes smart people to learn from our Father's word. But but people spiritually will do that. They'll say, "I'm going to go make it square again because I just like to be bumped." <laughs> You know, I like to bump along on rough roads, you know. I guess. I, maybe it scrambles them some. I don't know. But listen to what happens in our Father's Word and learn by it. Eleventh verse, chapter 25, the book of Jeremiah. And this whole land shall be a desolation. This is concerning Judah and Jerusalem again, all right? And an abomination, astonishment rather, I'm sorry. And these nations shall serve the king of Babylon seventy years. Do you know what the king of Babylon is? It's confusion. The base root of the word Babel means, Babylon rather, is Babel, and it means exactly that, confusion. Words, 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 men's words. Also, the king of Babylon, the ultimate, when we put this in a prophetic sense, is Satan reigning as king of Babylon. Now, many of you might say, well, are you applying that to the 70 years that uh, that other superpower reigned and we had so many troubles? And do you, Have you studied communism any at all? By that I mean what it did to the world. Do you know how many people were killed, murdered, maimed, put in captivity? It was millions. Millions, literally millions. If, if, you know, it, it's there, you don't have to worry about having elections. If they believe that way, kill them, you know, all of them. And you, you really get things, people going your way. Pretty soon they say, well, I either got to do it or I'm dead. All right? But they have had that taste of real freedom. And they're going to follow that real freedom. And I guarantee you, nobody's going to take it away from them now. They'll die first. They are not. There's no one going to stop that move now. So, understand the king of Babylon. You've got to look at it in kind of a twofold way. You see, communism was not brought forward by the Russian people. All right. By the Kenites. The Kenites brought forth communism and put it upon the Russian people. To do that, they had to murder the monarch and his family and anyone that would have any remembrance or loyalty to them. So, you have to look at this. I want you to look a little deeper than just saying the word King of Babylon. Kind of let your mind open up. Who caused the 70 years? All right, you got it now? Let's write. Twelve. And it came to pass, when seventy years are accomplished, you're going to find out what's going to happen after it. Read it and look around you and see it today. That I will punish the king of Babylon 
And that nation, saith the Lord, for their iniquity, and in the land of the Chaldeans, and will make it a perpetual desolation. What does that mean? That means we're, this is talking future, even from now. Perpetual means forever. It hasn't happened yet. But it's getting there. It's getting there. And I will bring upon that land all my words which I have pronounced against it. That means the prophecy will be completed against that land. Even all that is written in this book which Jeremiah has prophesied against all the nations of the world. One worldism. For many nations and great kings shall serve themselves of them also. And I will recompense them according to their deeds and according to the works of their own hands. Boy, do you have a shift of the nations now. Everyone grabbing their little par part. Look at Yugoslavia. Look at the various smaller nations that are reaching out and scrambling. Look at the Baltic states. Hey, I don't blame them for wanting to be free, all right? I'm just saying... Be aware that it's written here, all right? For thus saith the Lord God of Israel unto me, Take the wine cup of this fury at my hand and cause all the nations to whom I send thee to drink it. God has a people that he's sending forth at this time with his word. And if you break away from the word of God, you're going to drink the cup. And do you know what cup it is? It's the cup that Jesus said, Father, if it's possible, let this cup pass from my hand. It was not his crucifixion. That was written of long ago. Christ knew that he must be crucified. He wanted to be crucified because of his love for you. No, it was this cup that he knew he must pour out when he returned. And it is the cup of God's indignation against those that will not align with his word. And, beloved, you might as well get set for it. It will be the majority of the people in this world. It will be the majority of the people in the good old USA of A and Canada. And it's just going to be the majority of the people. But God has called certain people out as leaders of their people to hear the word, to know it, to understand it, and to act on it. Act on it. God's going to do it. All you have to do is believe and do what he tells you to. And you've got no problem except to receive his blessings. 16, and they shall drink and be moved and be mad because of the sword that I will send among them. Have you ever read Revelation chapter 1, verse 16? My sword is a two-edged sword, and it is the tongue of Yeshua, Messiah, Jesus the Christ, his word. That word is going to go forth. It's the only thing you can do that will harm Satan. Now wake up to that fact. The only way you can harm Satan is to use the sword of the Lord, and that is His Word. There is, you can order Him away from you, but you've got to use His Word to even do that, you see. But it pains Satan when you teach chapter by chapter and verse by verse. If you're in any other business and call it teaching... You're kidding, people. God spoke it. It is true. And it's more in depth than most can even understand. So be comfortable with His Word. And I'm going to tell you something. This is the wrong time to get sidetracked. The wrong time, friends. Because we're in it for the stay. All right? Then took I the cup at the Lord's hand and made all the nations to drink unto whom the Lord had sent me. We're going to pour that cup out whether they like it or not, or whether they'll receive it or not. The cup that is God's indignation, He shall pour out, but He will use some of you in the pouring. To wit, Jerusalem and the cities of Judah and the kings thereof and the princes thereof to make them a desolation and astonishment, a hissing and a curse as it is this day. It will not be that way, the actual curse, until Antichrist appears there. Get ready. I don't think you're going to have to wait all that long. Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and his servants, and his princes, and all his people, and all the mingled people, 
and all the kings of the land of Uz. That's the land that old Job came from, remember? All the kings of the land of the Philistines, Ashkelon, Azah, the, and Ekron, the remnant of Ashdod. That's where the deadly wound takes place, remember? The deadly wound tape that was made several years ago? Might think about playing yours again if it's still in the drawer somewhere. Edom, of course, is Rush, Russia of today. Moab uh, and the children of Ammon. And all the kings of Tyrus. There's that old word, Tyrus. Any of you ever heard of the king of Tyrus? If you read Ezekiel 28, you have it, Satan. All right? Right there, the old king of Babylon, King Satan himself, Ezekiel 28, telling you exactly what will happen to him. The kings of Zidon, that's right on the coast, and the kings of the isles, which are beyond the sea. Dedan and Tema, that's south Russia. And Buzz, and all they, you all know Buzz, don't you? And all they that are in the uttermost parts, I, I hope he's here. I wouldn't tease him if he wasn't here somewhere. Oh, there he is right there. And all, if he was gone and I said that, I'd feel bad. See, but I knew he was here somewhere. And all the kings of Arabia and all the kings of the Mingle people that dwell in the desert and all the kings of Zimri and all the kings of Elam and all the kings of the Medes. You keep in count how many kings this is. We're, we'll make it real easy for you here in another verse or two. All the kings of the north, far and near. You know what that means? I mean, those that are way out yonder and them that are neighbors one with another in all the kingdoms of the world. Now you got it. All the kingdoms of the world, which are upon the face of the earth, and the king of Shishak shall drink after them. This word Shishak is mentioned in the Masara. There is a, uh, an acrostic here. If you take the Hebrew alphabet and you reverse the alphabet, let me say... Let's say that A becomes, and I'll, I'm going to have to think here, in e, I'll think in English a moment. A is Z, all right? And B would be what then? X, Y, Z, Y, all right? And so forth. And you spell it, then this becomes Babel. Uh, your, your companion Bibles, I believe, make a note of that uh, as being in the mind. In other words, it's Babylon, all right? Only it's... Babylon that Satan rules because he makes everything backwards. He makes everything reverse so that men stumble and fall because they think they're as smart as he is. Well, if you follow God's Word, you are probably wiser than the serpent. Get away from the Word. You're dumb, friend. You'll lose everything. Okay? All right, let's read on just a little bit. Therefore... Thou shalt say unto them, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Drink ye, and be drunken, and spew, and fall. That means puke and fall in it. Uh, and rise no more because of the sword which I will send among you. That's pretty graphic, isn't it? But that's what it says in the Hebrew. I just thought you'd like to know. God's not happy with them, all right? Well, it's all right. They're Christian. They believe. It's just they think they're flying away. It's not all right, my friend, when it comes to, to overcoming before the millennium. It's a very serious thing. And God is not happy about it. Make them drink it until they throw up and then let them fall in it. And it shall be if they refuse to take the cup any time at, at time hand to... I'm sorry, the cup at thine hand to drink... Then shalt thou say unto them, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Ye shall certainly drink it. There's no choice. For lo, I begin to bring evil on the city which is called by my name, and shall be, and ye, and should ye be utterly unpunished? Question. You think I'm going to let you off scot free, even you that know the truth, we could say? Ye shall not be unpunished, for I will call for a sword upon all the inhabitants of the earth, saith the Lord of hosts. That's why I'm encouraging you to be very careful. The sword of the Lord is coming. And we have no vaccine for that. All right? Except, I know you're going to sin, and I know we're going to fall short. 
but keep your mind right with His Word. Don't be hanky panky and with, with um, well, I'm going to stop this one world system right now. No, you're not. It's God's plan, idiot. Well, here's this great patriot that's already fell in the clutches of this, and we got a rare... No, he was stupid, or he wouldn't have fell in the clutches of it. Let the sucker drown, all right? He has no part in it. Any man that will follow the traditions of man, let him burn. It's too late. Stay in God's Word and be blessed, my friend. The choice is yours, all right? It's that simple. Because God will even punish you that get out of line. The sword of the Lord is coming. It hurts no one that is in God's service. He loves His children that try to follow Him. Even try. Well, how do I do that? In His Word. Therefore prophesy thou against them all these words, and say unto them, The Lord shall roar from on high, and utter his voice from his holy habitation. Where is his holy place? It's wherever he is. He shall, magn he shall mightily roar upon his habitation. He shall give a shout as they that tread the grapes against all the inhabitants of the earth. You ever read that old great trumping chapter in the book of Revelation? And the old grape juice runs up to the bridles of the horses. Quite a harvest, my friends. I just don't want you to be a part of the harvest. I want you to be a harvestee. All right? If we say that right, I think so. It'll do, won't it? All right? I want you to be helping with the harvest. I don't want you to be some of them old bleeding grapes laid out there for everybody to look at. All right? And, and you take some old boy like me that's got 13 size shoes I can't hardly miss. You know? It's... it's I don't want you on that pile, all right? It's real simple. Stay in His Word and don't get sidetracked. And there's going to be... A, I'm, the reason I hope that you can discern from my voice that I am concerned. Satan is about to bring deception like we haven't seen before. He's going to make some things, because God's going to make things good for us, Satan's going to make things seem so good that you couldn't go wrong. Whoa, what a deal I got for myself today. If that deal is not mentioned in this word, it's not worth a hoot, and you stay out of it, all right? A noise shall come even to the ends of the earth, for the Lord hath a controversy with the nations. He will plead with all flesh. He will give them that are wicked to the sword, saith the Lord. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Behold, evil shall go forth from nation to nation. Hey, don't expect anything else, okay? Nothing but evil is going to go forth. And a great whirlwind shall be raised up from the coast of the earth. That, again, is divine intervention. And thank God for you. Uh, uh, or you be thankful to God that it is, because it's His divine intervention to protect you and to see that His promise is kept true in your life. And the slaying of the Lord shall be at that day from one end of the earth even unto the other end of the earth. And... They, they shall not be lamented, neither gathered nor buried. They shall be dung upon the ground. Of course, you know what that is. That's the seventh trump. When we're all changed to spiritual bodies, it simply means God has taken over. All right? Totally and completely. But there's work to do until that time. The 70 years are over. And we're marching. Hell, you shepherds. Oh, there's that sweet word, shepherds of the flock. These are turkeys, friend. These are these shepherds that mislead you. They're not good shepherds of God's, all right? The Hebrew makes it very clear. Just thought I'd share that with you. This is your turkey preachers. This is old Rev, all right? Might even say Leroy from the Ozarks, all right? <laughs> okay? Howl, you shepherds, and cry, and wallow yourselves in the ashes, you principal of the flock, for the days of your slaughter, of your uh, dispersions, are accomplished. And ye shall fall like a pleasant vessel, a lamb for slaughter. 
Don't think that God, these men that will teach for hire or teach something they don't know anything about, their day is coming. God doesn't like it. And the shepherd shall have no way to flee, nor the principle of the flock to escape. A voice of the cry of the shepherds and an howling of the principle of the flock shall be heard. For the Lord has spoiled their pasture. Their little playhouse churches are over. Their little churches next door are gone, done away with. Oh, but God, I thought I had a crown with stars for all these people I saved. And he said, yeah, but all those people you saved are worshiping Satan. What is this that I'm supposed to give you? A kick? You know? Do you understand what I'm saying? A lot of people think they got a lot to be proud of, but if they're not careful, they'll be, have nothing to do but be ashamed. Spew and fall in it. It's a serious, serious thing. And the peaceable habitations are cut down because of the furious anger of the Lord. He is coming back, and he is not happy. He hath forsaken his covert. Well, that's some covert activity by God. I thought in this new age and time, boy, if you have a covert action, that is whew, bad. Well, God's going to pull one on them, okay? He's coming out in covert as the lion. That means the lion is going to come out of his little hiding place in the open. For their land is desolate because of the fierceness of the oppressor and because of his furious anger. The lion of the tribe of Judah is going to start walking this earth. He is coming back, but his many-membered body will begin. What did Jesus say? I do not come to this earth to bring peace, but a fire. And if I find that fire kindled, I'll be happy. I don't know how many of you know how to gather kindling wood, or even what kindling is. But learn about it, all right? Learn about it. Sometimes a little kindling can make a big fire, all right? And that's the way God does. He's talking about the Holy Spirit, all right, for those that are not necessarily familiar with it. So that the Holy Spirit moves in people. And if God touches you, and that Spirit moves on you, and you become a champion of your people, leading your people, nobody can stop you anymore. If you do it intelligently, and you do it in God's Word. Let me document that for you from the Word, okay? Would that make you feel good? And I'm going to finish this with that. I'm going to document from God's Word. The 70 years are over. And everything's going to be good for you if you'll let it. Turn with me to Isaiah chapter 23. Let's see, that's the Old or the New Testament? That's, a, that's the Old Testament, isn't it? Yeah, of course. <laughs> I'm just making sure everybody's awake, that's all, okay? You're with me, fine, wonderful. Do <laughs> you remember, uh, while the people are turning to the 23rd, do you remember what the 24th chapter is? The Apocalypse of Isaiah, meaning the book of Revelation by Isaiah. The end, my friend. So what we're going to be reading here happens just before the end. Okay, I want to pick it up. But first, let me let me just lay some groundwork. Or you're... This chapter concerns Tyre, all right? Not Babylon, but it's written directly to Tyre. Now, you all know, again, I'll say who the king of Tyre is. That's Satan, Ezekiel 28, all right? Seventy years were determined against Tyre also. Now, now listen to me closely. I know it's hot in here, and I know it's that time of the day that I'm always taking a nap for broadcast tonight. I don't know if you all have noticed that or not, but it, it's, it's my time of the day that I'm usually snoozing, snoozing just a little bit. But, so, but I want you to wait for this so that you think. Judah wasn't the only one that 70 years were put upon. Tyre had 70 years put upon him, and this is it. And you know what? They're the same. Only Tyre gets his promise, all right? This is future 
the last verse of this has not come to pass. Almost any commentary that you read will tell you, we don't understand this, but we know it hadn't happened yet. But we cannot tell you, according to this good brother or that good brother, this must happen in the millennium because nobody can understand it in this day. Well, we can understand it. All right? The curse of the 70 years placed upon Tyre. You will notice in verse 13 that even the Assyrian is mentioned. Tyre will be rebuilt. Did you hear what I said? God is going to rebuild Tyre. Why would he do that? That's the most evil nation there ever was. It's Satan's own people. God is going to rebuild them. Well, I'll put a stop to that right away. Oh, will you? Oh, will you? Well, yes, I'll get something out on that right away. Oh, well, go right ahead and get ready for the axe. This is the way it's going to happen. Okay. Let's start with 14. Howl, ye ships of Tarshish, for your strength is laid waste. And it shall come to pass in that day that Tyre shall be forgotten seventy years. Didn't have much to do. Didn't gain much ground. Seventy years of idleness. But God, back to the type where he cleaned the island of Tyre, it was destroyed. But he says, when that's over, now you with me? Be sharp. Tyre shall be forgotten seventy years according to the days of one king. Well, now, your commentators will say, well, we think maybe that's a, ser that's a series of kings. And you'll have a little note in your companion Bible that kind of goes around a series of kings. Well, don't you all know who the king of Tyre is? Well, why should we let the commentary screw uh, mess us up? <laughs> our minds, that is. Our minds. All right? If you know who the king of Tyre is, it's according to him, all right? And then there's no surprises, all right? The days of one king. I think you all know who that king is and what his reign is, all right? We don't have to play games. After the end of 70 years shall Tyre sing as an harlot. That means she's going back into business again. Do you know how a harlot goes? Well, it, you know, she's going to get back into business. Prostituting the world. Well, I'll stop that. No, you won't. It's God's plan. All right? Take an heart. Go about the city, thou harlot, that hast been forgotten. Make sweet melody. Sing many songs that thou may, mayest be remembered. Get ready for deception like you've never heard it before, my friend. The 70 years are over and we're plus four. And the songs are being sung. I marvel. I mean, really marvel at some of the statements made to the people of this world today. I may say something about that, but it has nothing to do with this subject here. We'll do it in question and answers here in a moment. 17. And it shall come to pass. Did it say, maybe, uh-uh. We're talking about Tyre. That's the subject here. Don't lose it. That's our enemy. And it shall come to pass after the end of 70 years that the, land, that the Lord shall will visit Tyre, and she shall turn to her hire, and shall commit fornication with all the kingdoms of the world upon the face of the earth. Do you know what that's called? One worldism. I want you to hear this last verse. It's a promise, and it's why that we will continue in the Lord's business. 18. And her merchandise and her hire shall be holiness. Whoa, that's got to be a mistranslation. No, it isn't. I'm going to read it again. And her merchandise and her hire shall be holiness to the Lord. It shall not be treasured nor laid up, for her merchandise shall be for them that dwell before the Lord, to eat sufficiently 
And for durable clothing, that durable clothing means robes, man. I mean fancy stuff. That's the reason I got on a new set of threads today. No, not really, okay? That's what it said. God is going to bless Tyre. And not only that, Tyre is going to be a blessing to us. How in the world can that be? Okay, let me give you a little lesson in Hebrew, all right? The word hire. Now, first, let's take fornication in verse 17. Let's straighten this out so you can understand that it. it's important. The word fornication is zanah. Check it out in your strongs when you get home where you got time just zanah. And because Tyre's system in prostitution recognizes absolutely none of the statutes of God, then it is opposed naturally to God and making itself common to all the world, it becomes a prostitution of souls. That shouldn't be a surprise to you, all right? A prostitution of souls. Can your soul be prostituted? We might use a better word, proselytized. But God chose to use this to show you what's going to happen. Are you going to be with child when he returns? I trust not. And that does not have anything to do literally with a mother carrying a child. It means that you are impregnated spiritually by the false husband, which is to say Satan. All right? But let's talk about this word higher then. Higher. It's ethnan. It man means it means to uh, the price of harlotry or idolatry. The price of harlotry or idolatry, worshiping another god, putting some other god before ours. But it said very plainly that Tyre would be a, a, a blessing to God. He would consider it holiness. That's not what it said, my friend. If you read it that way, and I have to be partly responsible because I led you that way. But that's not what the Scripture said. Let's read it again, and I want you to watch your subject, and I want you to watch your object. All right? Eighteenth verse, your blessing. Let's don't mess it up. And her merchandise, her what? Her merchandise. Didn't say anything about Tyre. But Tyre's merchandise, that's the subject. And her hire, all right? That's the money from her prostitution or the fruit of her prostitution shall be holiness to the Lord. Not Tyre, not her harlotry or anything else. Just the merchandise and the money, friend. That's all we care about, all right? That will be a blessing to God and to those that stand before it. Now let's understand it. And so help me, don't you get in God's way. God intends to allow a great deal of deception to come on this earth. And he considers the proceeds and the profits thereof as valuable to him and us. And he will bless you in your family, in your ministry, if you will do it his way. If you don't get in the way, and if you understand what's happening, he's going to use you teaching his word, not somebody else's junk, all right? His word. I guarantee you that you'll never hear anything else taught unless it's a documentary witnessing and documenting the migrations of the people in this book from this chapel. Because I learned a long time ago, if you want God's blessings, you'll do it His way. And that doesn't mean I know everything by any means, but I'm trying and you're trying. And that's why we've been blessed. But it's only beginning. Why is it only beginning? The 70 years are over. And the promise is that from that point forward, it is good. It is good. Enjoy it, my friends because we're in that time. I hope you can understand how that those that stand with God, this is a profitable to them 
because the many things we've taught for 10 or 15 years are coming to pass, and any prophecy that comes to pass as it's written is a credit to God and to you. It strengthens your faith. But what it does, it lets you know that God's Word is, is being fulfilled daily and at a rapid pace, which means what? The best thing of all about it, He's coming soon. He's coming soon. But so help me. I cannot illustrate enough. I will certainly be doing my utmost in study and research to keep us straight in His Word, and as you do, as each of you do. I know that you all study, and I'm so proud of you, but I felt compelled strongly to issue this warning. I didn't feel compelled. God told me to do it. And I didn't even know Friday night I'd be teaching this today. I really didn't. When we made that final broadcast down there, I asked, has anybody got any ideas on what we can talk about this weekend? Well, he had some ideas, and we talked about them. The holiness to God is the fruit that is produced by the prostitution of Tyre. Satan's going to do us a lot of good, because he's going to drive a lot of fruit to us. Meaning what? Those souls that he tries to prostitute, all those seeds that you have planted, say, this is going to happen, that's going to happen, will happen, and fruit will come forth to you. We're in the time of harvest. But that doesn't mean we put the planter away. All right, We polish that rascal up and we fill that seed box and, and, and we feed the stock good and let's get planting. All right? Let's take that old trumpet back there and let's wind that rascal up and let's shoot that thing out there 22,000 miles and keep covering the third of this hemisphere. And don't be surprised, we already have signed for the first transponder on Hughes, an American company, over Europe. And, and we're, that's television now, not short wave. Who knows what God makes possible? I can only say He does it with your help. You're a great bunch of people. Don't mess up, all right? Stay in His Word. Let's all work hard at studying it and doing it His way, all right? And that's real easy to follow because He teaches in such a way that He brought it to pass. He said, look how these children did in crossing the Red Sea, all right? A, B, C, all right? We're about to cross into the Promised Land. He's going to do all the opening, and I'm not worried about that. I know that when he opens it up, you're going through. I'm just worried about some of you getting out there and splashing around and trying to open it yourself, all right? <laughs> I ought to get this over with, all right? No, 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 no. You've got to do it his way, and he'll, don't worry, he'll let us know, all right, through his word. Okay, I love you all, and we're going to close this particular lecture at this point. You have a reward. It is good. You stand before the Lord trying to do His work. Therefore, the absolute fruit from Tyre's success will be your gain, your wealth, and it will furnish robes for you. I, I, I teased about having a new set of threads. Nobody said anything, but boy, they are, all right? Okay? I didn't have any stickers. Before to get somebody to notice I had a new suit, I had to leave the sale tag on there, a big sale tag. But be that as it may. You know what clothing it clothes you with? It's the gospel armor. Their success strengthens your gospel armor like one of those high-powered tanks we used in Desert Storm, all right, that can shoot in the dark. All right, because you know what you're shooting at, and I'm speaking spiritually. So it will put your gospel armor on and in place. Hey, the 70 years are over. It's 70 plus 4 and counting. Is it good? Wow. Let's, I kept saying, how many minutes have I got in this? Am I running over? I got one minute? All right. 70 years and counting, and is it good? Yeah, look at Russia and the men that are free there. Now, that'll answer your question. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for the privilege of gathering together to study thy word. Be with us this day. We ask it in Yeshua's precious name. Amen.